to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sun. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. Father, we thank you and praise you for this day, a day in which you have made, and a day in which we live in to your grace, by your grace. Bless us, God, as we worship you now in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Glad that you are here. Welcome those who are online as well. It's good to come before our Lord. And it's come, good to come and be honest with Him and uh, confess our sins before Him and also hear what He has to say to us. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, thank you that you call us to come, that you make it possible for us to come before your throne of grace. We pray that you would bring to our attention that in this time those things which we need to pray, uh, to confess before you. Amen. Gracious God in heaven, we bow before you to confess to you that we have sinned and done that which is evil in your sight. We have walked in pride. We have not been as thankful or forgiving as you would like us to be. Help us to show forth the fruits of your spirit, the love, joy, and peace that you have shown to us, and forgive us for all our wrongdoing even those stubborn habits that we struggle with. For we pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Hear these words from Psalm 32, verse 5. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Amen. first reading this morning is found in Isaiah 66, verses 18 through 23. It's Isaiah chapter 66, verses 18 through 23. And I, because of their actions and their imaginations, am about to come and gather all nations and tongues, and they will come and see my glory. I will set a sign I will set a sign among them, and I will send some of those who survive to the nations, to Tarshish, to the Libyans and Lydians, to Tubal and Greece, and to the distant islands that have not heard of my fame or seen my glory. They will proclaim my glory among the nations, and they will bring all your brothers from the nations to my holy mountain in Jerusalem as an offering to the Lord, on horses and chariots and wagons, and on mules and camels, says the Lord. They will bring them as the Israelites bring their grain offerings to the temple of the Lord in ceremonially clean vessels. And I will select some of them also to be priests and Levites, says the Lord. As the the new heavens and the new earth that I will make, that I make will endure before me, declares the Lord, so will your name and descendants endure. From one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, All mankind will come and bow down before me, says the Lord. Our second reading is in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 4 through 29. Hebrews chapter 12, starting at verse 4. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And you have forgotten that word of encouragement that addresses you as sons. My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline, and do not lose heart when he rebukes you, because the Lord disciplines those he loves, and he punishes everyone he accepts as a son. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as sons. For what son is not disciplined by his father? If you are not disciplined, and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are illegitimate children and not true sons. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the Father of our spirits and live? 
Our fathers disciplined us for a little while as they thought best. But God disciplines us for our good, that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. Make level paths for your feet, so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. Make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy. Without holiness, holiness no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one misses the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. See that no one is sexually immoral or is godless like Esau, who for a single meal sold his inheritance rights as the oldest son. Afterward, as you know, when he wanted to inherit this blessing, he was rejected. He could bring about no change of mind, though he sought the blessing with tears. You have not come to a mountain that can be touched, and that is burning with fire, to darkness, gloom, and storm, to a trumpet blast, or to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it begged that no further word be spoken to them, because they could not bear what was commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned. The sight was so terrifying that Moses said, I am trembling with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all men, to the spirits of righteous men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See to it that you do not refuse him who speaks. If they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, how much less will we if we turn away from him who warns us from heaven? At that time his voice shook on earth, but now he has promised, Once more I will not shake only the earth, but also the heavens. The words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken, that is, created things so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful, and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. I invite you to stand, let's profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for your greatness. 
We thank you for these tithes and these gifts and these offerings, and we pray that you would use them, God, you would multiply them, and that you would use us too to the proclamation of your gospel to our neighbors, to the people in the community, Lord, in this state, in this nation, in the world. All to your glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, again, good morning. Good morning. There's some announcements in the bulletin I'd like to lift up here. One of them is a love offering, which is being received today. Now, I presume we're doing this right after the worship service and on your way out, right? Yep. Okay. Right where you pick up the bulletin. Right by the bulletins there. So you can go ahead and put the offering there for the Evie Hermansley. And you can make it out to Bethany, but then uh, it'll be given to them too. And so if you can't do it today for whatever reason, you can do it before the 28th if you get it to Vicky. All right. Okay, and also something a little bit different here. If you'd like to send in photos, some of you have already shared some photos you have. And uh, if you take some during the week with your phone or however you do it, and you want to send some to us, we might get it on the screen for the PowerPoints or whatever, if it works for that. So please consider doing that. And there's an email included in the announcement here, but photos for Bethany Worship at gmail.com. And then uh, from there, we'll, we'll go. So it's lots of people can take pictures, and some of you have some amazing photos that get sent to me. I just go, wow, this is great. So please consider that. Thank you. All right, other announcements? Any other announcements? Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your amazing love for us. Thank you for all the blessings you send our way, and we pray, God, that we can recognize them and give you thanks and praise for them. Fill us up, Lord, with your spirit and your love and direct our paths to live and love as you would have us to do. Heavenly Father, uh, we pray for those in this world who are persecuted for their faith in Jesus. Help them to remain strong in you. Help them to love those who persecute them, to pray for them. We pray to God that you are glorified in that. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who grieve. We pray your comfort upon them, especially as they remember those who've uh, passed away in the last year. We pray that you would bless them and encourage them, remind them uh, of your victory in the, the saints' lives. Father, we pray your blessings upon Tashina. Thank you for her and we, for her family, Karen and Keith, and bless them to uh, continue to love and serve. Lord, we pray that you would strengthen all of our AFLC missionaries. We especially lift up Jonathan and Tampa Abel and John and Hannah Lee and their families, and for Matthew and Ed and I and their children. Lord, that they would... Uh, do all what you call them to do, that they would share the good news of Jesus with those they meet and live with. We pray for them to be able to see fruits of their labor too. We lift up to you, New Hope Free Lutheran, and Pastor Bill Helen and Sisseton. Bring them to prayer. Bring them to spiritual growth and salvation of souls. Father, we praise you that Renee's surgery went well. Continue to Grant healing there and encouragement to her and to Marlo. And Father, for those who do not know you or do not trust you, whether it be in our families or neighbors, we just pray, Heavenly Father, that people will humble themselves before you, that there will be a spiritual revival because of repentance and your spirit moving. Move us, God, to joyfully hear your word and to pray in daily worship. Father, we pray for President Biden and Vice President Harris, the House of Representatives, the Senate, the Supreme Court justices, that they would all come to repentance and respect and obey and love and serve you. Lord, help them to serve this nation according to your will 
and according to our U.S. Constitution and not according to man's plans. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus, our resurrected Lord and Savior. Amen. Let's sing about our holy God, how holy he is. Some are, song number 134 in your ambassador hymnal. Okay, children, come on up. Come, come, come. I have something here in my pocket that is something you might recognize right away or you won't know what it is. Okay. Some kind of bell. Some kind of a bell. Some kind of top. Some kind of a top. It's a gadget. It's a gadget. What do you think it is? It's a cat toy. It's like a fishing rod almost. And well, you know what? I'm going to tell you here. If you looked in the bulletin, I think it's a gyroscope. Good memory. Yeah, in the bulletin it says a gyroscope reminder, I think. And it does something that is kind of unusual. Okay. Can I show you something, though? Why don't you put your hand out? Hold your hand out like this. And then we'll put it just like this. And do you think it's going to stand up or fall over? Yeah, it, it falls over. Isn't that funny? I mean, even if you put on this little stand here, you, you want to hold the stand for me? Like that. If we put it like this, it falls over. But there's, God's made things, hold this again like this. God's made things to be in such a way that uh, there's like little laws of You're physics. Gonna pull the string and then it's going it's gonna to spin, spin. yeah. Oh. A post, that's exactly right. Here, let's give it a try. Whoops. I'm going to let you guys play with it afterwards, okay, in the meantime, so we don't go too long. I'm just going to get it going here, and we put it on like this. Whoops. Here, hold it this, hold this like that. There you go. That's cool. Isn't that cool? I think it has something to do with angular that's motion. so weird. Yeah, it doesn't... Like you know, gyroscopes like these a lot smaller, they are uh, used in all kinds of equipment today. 
You have them, uh, I think you have them in your phone. I know you have them in uh, drones and helicopters and different things like that, airplanes. Hey, it's still going. Now hold it. It's still going, but it's not going to stand as well anymore. Oh, yeah, here, so you hold it this I time. You could stop it. Yeah, you just touch it and it stops. But there's two scriptures I'm going to share with you that remind me about this, about how this keeps going. So you put the string through a little hole that's right there. Oops. It's like threading the needle. Oh, wait, I almost got it. It's like threading the needle almost. And oh, boy. It's a bit bigger. Got it. Yeah. So we'll do it one more time here. Then you wind it up like that. Now, you hold this, hold that tight with your fingers, okay? Hold it up like this, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it on there. Pull it tight. Ooh, I don't know if I did that very well. Hold it up. I don't think I did that one very well. I didn't yeah. pull it very well. But you get the idea, right? After church, you can play with that, all right? Now I'll show you how to work it. You can hold it in the meantime. Can I hold it? Yep. But listen to the scriptures here. I have two scriptures. One from John 15, all right? Let's, let's not try to get it going now, though. John 15, verse 9. Listen to this verse. All righty. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. Jesus said that. He said, remain in my love. And when this little gyroscope here, it spins and spins and spins, and it keeps up. It remains where it is you know, when you get it going. But it needs energy to keep it going. And once it slows down, boom. So Jesus said, remain in my love. When we remain in his love for our life, you know what? Here, I'll hold it. Then we can continue and live for him. You know, to continue in his love. I have another verse I'm going to share with you too. This one is from Psalm 118, verse 14. Not right now, huh? Psalm 118, verse... Nope, leave it there, please. Psalm 118, verse 14. I'm glad you're curious about it, but you can look at it afterwards. Psalm 118, verse 14. Listen to this word. See if you can figure out why I picked it. 14 says, The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He is our strength. Psalm he, we can keep going, keep spinning, keep going towards him. It's kind of like we want to keep our eyes on Jesus, right? And this is keeping going in the same direction. And that keeps it up. It's just a little hint that reminds us that we trust in him. We keep looking. Hey, guys, look at me. Like this. Look. Can I have that? There we go. Keep your eyes on him. Keep moving towards him. Remain in him. And he's the one who helps us to do that. Okay? We ask him to help, we trust him, and we keep living for him. Yeah, so we'll, you can play with the gyroscope later, but remember, it keeps going because you've got to put energy into it, and God's one gives us energy to keep going for him. So let's pray. Thank you, God, so much for you loving us. Help us to remain in you. Help us to keep living for you. You are our strength. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for coming up. All right, Randy. Thank you. Remind me to get it out later. I invite you to stand. The reading of the gospel today is from Luke chapter 13. So if you'd like to turn to your place in the Bible, go ahead. Luke 13 beginning at verse 22. Then Jesus went through the town and villages, teaching as he made his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? He said to them, Make every effort to enter through the narrow door, because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to, once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside, knocking and pleading, Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know you or where you come from. Then he will say, We ate and drank with you, and you taught in our streets. But he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Away from me, all you evildoers. There will be weeping there and gnashing of teeth, 
when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves thrown out. People will come from east and west and north and south and will take their places at the feast in the kingdom of God. Indeed, there are those who are last who will be first and first who will be last. The Gospel of our Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, trustworthy and true. Bless us as we uh, ponder it more in this time. Pray that you would speak to our hearts what we need to hear and help us to apply it to our lives to honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. In Luke 13 today, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. And he stops in various towns and, and he teaches. And one person asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? It's rather interesting because I think that wouldn't be the question today. The question today would be by somebody, Lord, is everyone going to be saved? I hear that far more often than are a few going to be saved. Jesus profoundly answered, make every effort to enter through the narrow door because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. The words in the Greek New Testament, make every effort, this is it's plural. It's like saying, you all make every effort. Like all of you make every effort to enter through the narrow door. Jesus is concerned for each one of those people there. He cares about them. He loves them. You all make every effort. Granted, it's by grace that we're saved, we know in scriptures. It's by grace through faith in Jesus. But he says, make every effort. One person wrote the expression, make every effort, uh, strive is the rendering of an athletic term. It's used to speak of competition in athletic games. You know, a person, when they enter a race, they, they don't go, oh, maybe I'll try running a little bit today, you know, a little harder maybe, or throwing a little bit harder. But when they go up there, usually, at least the people I've seen, they're trying their best, and they want to do their best, and they're going to try hard. Otherwise, it's like they're throwing the game or they, they don't care. You know, granted, there are people who do that too. So it means to battle, to fight an opponent, to do your best, to strive hard, to struggle. That's what's involved in this make every effort. Jesus was talking to the Israelites. He's talking to Jews. Nearly all Israelites... I suspect, thought, hey, we're Israelites. We're going to be in the kingdom of God. Most Israelites thought that they, since they were born a Jew or circumcised, that they'd go to heaven. I think that kind of happens in lots of religions. People think if they do this and do that, that they, they're going to be able to go in heaven. You know, if they live this way, if they uh, sacrifice themselves, they get to go up to be with God. It's not unlike some Christians who believe that if you're baptized, well, it's a guarantee you're going to heaven. People don't get to heaven by things they do. Instead, Jesus tells us that there's a, a narrow door. So what is that narrow door that few go through? Few, it didn't say many, it didn't say everyone, that few go through. It's like, whew. Just that we give a brief interpretation uh, here. Uh, we believe that the Bible is inerrant and infallible in the original text, and we believe that it's inspired by the Holy Spirit and, and does not and also cannot contradict itself because it's God's Word. God cannot contradict Himself. Therefore, it logically follows that Scripture is not going to contradict itself either since it's God's Word. So, what is this narrow door that few go through? Let's take a look at another Bible verse. Jesus said in John chapter 10, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. 
they will come and go in and out and find pasture. That's from John 10, verse 9. So Jesus is the gate. And it says in Matthew 7, 13 to 14, that Jesus is the narrow door. And also in that text, it talks about how Jesus, Jesus said, enter through the narrow gate, because the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it, are, there are many. But to enter by the, to enter by the narrow gate, it's, it's hard. And, and those who enter by it are few. Jesus is saying that he's the only way of salvation. The only way to be saved. We can look at John 14, verse 6, and some other ones I have listed on your insert, and we'll have them available later, but salvation in Acts 4.12 says that it's found in no one else. There's no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. No other name. He is the gate. He is the only way. That's why Jesus said the door is narrow. So if you believe that Jesus is the only way to heaven, someone might say to you that you're rather narrow-minded. <laughs> they might think that. And you, know, you can tell them, if they say, oh, you're so narrow-minded, you can say, well, you've got it half right. You know? It's not me, though, who's narrow-minded. This narrow-mindedness is saying that Jesus is the narrow door. That's just what God said. That's the way it is. Wouldn't you agree with me, too, that uh, God knows everything? Well, we know Scripture tells us that. God knows everything. He knows us. He knows us perfectly. You know, Psalm 139 says that, You searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. Remember, Jesus also said, he knew how many hairs were on your head, right? This is important to mention that twice it says in the Gospel of John that Jesus knows all things. You can look at John 16.30. John 21, 17, that's an attribute that only God has. So what's that say about Jesus? Jesus says twice in the lesson today, I don't know you or where you come from. So how does he not know them if he knows everything? It's in a little different sense, isn't it? To know where someone is from says a lot about that person. Usually the language they speak, possibly the religion that they practice, the traditions that they have, they're known by if you can, if you know them, you know where they're from. I met a person recently from uh, Missouri, Tennessee. They have an accent. But those who were moved from Montana to Missouri, they don't have an accent to me. They sound like us, you know. But on Judgment Day, if a person is not a citizen of the kingdom, from that kingdom, if they're not a forgiven person by Jesus, they're not washed in the blood then Jesus doesn't know them. They're not of him. And they'll be told to go away from him. So the whole tr thing here is we want to be known by Jesus, right? Many people will make a very dangerous assumption. It's a, it's a very real one. And you might, if you talk about Jesus with people, you're going to have it come up to you. Here's the assumption. Association with Jesus is not enough. Knowing about Jesus is not enough. We know that. But the people here in Jesus' time, they said, we ate and drank with you. 
You taught in our streets. Some of those Jews spent time with Jesus and they ate and drank with him and they had heard him teach in their towns. But associating with Jesus isn't enough. Knowing about him isn't enough. It didn't get him through the narrow door. Many people think they're going to heaven because they were raised in a Christian home or because they want, went to church on Sundays or maybe because they gave money to the church or were generous in their giving their money to the church. Many people think that they're going to heaven because they gave to charities or because they call themselves a Christian. That's the typical one I hear. I'm a Christian. Well, you can maybe say you're a Christian, but if you don't know and love Jesus, then he doesn't know you. Associating with Jesus is not enough. Jesus needs to be, of course, our Savior and our Lord. He needs to be in command of our life by us letting him be. Recently, I was visiting with someone about uh, decisions that they made in their life, and it was someone from away from here. And uh, he, uh, he, was, he needed new management because the boss that he had, terrible boss, <laughs> was wrecking his life. And he needed to let somebody else have that management. You know, ironically, he had said he was on his way to do crystal meth when we when he'd, we'd stopped him and talked with him. And he's on the way to do that. And did he change his mind after talking with us? He said he had a very good conversation with me and we got to pray with him. What's he going to do? I guess it's up to him. But we pray that he will realize that God's the one who can help him. Jesus first spoke about the narrow door. You all strive to enter it. Later he spoke about the shut door. And I, that's not a door that any of us want to see. The time will come when it's too late for people to enter it. That's why it's important now to not put it off. You know, whoever might be listening online or whatever. It's such an important thing. Jesus says to make every effort, do all you can, strive and struggle to enter through that door. That's what matters. Jesus said, away from me, all you evildoers. Those are the ones who try to get in, but it's too late. So there's a time limit. A time limit. Uh, Hebrews 9.27 says, it's appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment. So what about the many who will not enter by the narrow door. They stand outside, they're weeping and gnashing their teeth. A lot of people uh, prefer not to talk about hell. A lot of people think it doesn't exist, but hell is a much worse place than anybody can imagine on this earth. A place where those who don't know the Lord and love Him will see it's too late. It'll be a place where people are in darkness, and gnashing teeth, and separation from God, and eternal suffering. As you'd like, when someone hears that, you'd think they'd be stirred with, oh, I don't want to go there. What can I do not to be there? How can I not go there? Jesus said, make every effort to enter through the narrow door. He's the door. He's the hope. He's the help. So many seek to be known for doing something in their life. You know, uh, I think about all the people out here who some relatives of yours are out in the, in the, in the uh, cemetery here. There's a lot of people out there who were, died in the late 1800s, early 1900s. We have no clue who they are. But the most important thing is that they trusted in the Lord Jesus. That's the most important thing. You don't want to be known as being a great farmer. You don't want to be known as being whatever, a great uh, mechanic, unless along with it is knowing Jesus. That's the thing that matters and that he knows us. <clears throat> so how can a person 
be known by Jesus. Here's a verse from Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 8, verse 3. It says, but whoever loves God is known by God. Isn't that neat? Whoever loves God is known by God. If you love God, you'll be known by him. Why would you love God? Because you know that Jesus died for you on the cross, arose on the third day. You know the price that he paid for you. That's why you would love God. You know that he did what you couldn't do. That's why you'd love God. You'd know that God first loved you so that you could freely love God. Galatians 4.9 says, But now that you know God, or rather are known by God, how is it you are turning back to those weak, miserable forces? Do you wish to be enslaved by them all over again? Salvation is free to all who would receive it. It comes through faith in the victorious and resurrected Lord Jesus. Salvation through Jesus is the door. Jesus said in John 10, 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Knowing him. Uh, it's like that song we sang earlier. You know, Knowing you, Jesus, there is no greater thing. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. The most important thing is to be known by Jesus. And we should do whatever's at our... Uh, Ability, access, to strive, to work harder, to know him, to trust him more. You know, because when that happens, uh, we're kind of doing what Jesus said to do. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your provision of grace and faith. And Lord, we just pray that we would do all that we can to know you better trust you more, to serve you. We pray that we do not rely on things we've done or will do, but rely fully on you. We say thank you, Father. We pray this in the name of Jesus for ourselves, but also for others we know, whether it be family or friends or people we don't know who need to know you. Use us to your glory too. In Jesus' name, amen. Number 485, All to Jesus I Surrender.
Would you join me in praying the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.